Here's what I learned in school. Quadratic formula, sedimentary rock formation, war of 1812, the biology of a cell. Here's what I didn't learn in school. Personal finance, what to do with my money, how to invest, and how to get rich. Andrew Hallam, a high school teacher, became a millionaire at age 36 and achieved financial freedom at age 40. All without a trust fund or winning the lottery. In this video, I'll share the 9 rules of wealth from his book, The Millionaire Teacher, to help you achieve the same. Rule number 1. Spend like the rich. The author tells a story of a student he used to tutor, and at the end of every session, the student's mom would pick him up in a fancy Jaguar car with her Rolex watch, and then they went home to their big house and had dinner with their investment banker dad. Well, I'm not sure about the dinner part. I'm guessing that's what probably happened, but the rest is true. When Andrew Hallam tried to cash the check he received from this lady for his tutoring, it bounced. He was shocked. The lesson here is, just because someone appears rich, it does not mean they always are. In fact, the rich often have careful spending habits. If you think the average millionaire in the US drives a Ferrari or a flashy BMW, think again. The car of choice for the average US millionaire is the good old reliable Toyota. And most million dollar homes aren't owned by millionaires, they're owned by people who want to have that high standard of living and not to mention that high mortgage payment. Wealthy people are actually frugal and avoid debt. They spend less than what they earn and are able to invest the rest. That's why they're rich. Rule number two, use the greatest investment ally you have. Meet time. Time is your friend. Time wants to help you grow your money using compound interest. Use time. Starting early is one of the best things you can do for your investment journey. If you're 18, start now. If you're 50, no better time to start than now. Compound interest can snowball your investments real fast. Here's an example. $100 invested at 10% annually becomes $110 after year one, $121 after year two, $259 after year 10, but after 40 years, it becomes $4,525. And here's the mind-boggling part. After 80 years, it becomes $204,840. This is all with an initial investment of $10 invested. With frequent contributions and enough time to compound, these numbers can look much bigger. But don't invest if you have any high interest debt, such as credit cards, which can charge 18 to 24% interest. The author recommends paying them down first. Other than that, don't wait to start investing. Start now and watch the magic of compounding. Thanks, time. Rule number three, small fees pack big punches. All right, so now you know you have to save money and invest, but how do you get started? Well, let's talk about what you shouldn't do first. You should not invest in actively managed mutual funds. Why? Because they tend to have higher fees that benefit your financial advisor and not you. Instead, you should invest in index funds. When you buy an index fund, instead of actively picking stocks, you are investing in the whole index that contains thousands of companies. Don't believe me or the author. This advice is also backed by some very smart people. Warren Buffett has said that the best investment for the average person is index funds and that he's going to instruct that the majority of his estate be invested in index funds after his passing. The best way to diversify a stock portfolio is with a low fees index fund, as per Paul Samuelson, Nobel Prize winner in economics. When Daniel Kahneman, another Nobel Prize winner in economics and author of the uber popular book Thinking Fast and Slow, was asked about investors' long term chances of beating index funds, his reply was, They're just not going to do it. It's just not going to happen. So take the advice of these smart people. Avoid high fees and get started on your investment journey with index funds. Rule number four, conquer the enemy in the mirror. Focusing on building a balanced portfolio rather than letting emotion sway your investment decisions is important for smart investors trying to build wealth. Buy low, sell high. Sounds great in theory, right? But we see a rush of people trying to invest and get a piece of the stock market when times are good and prices are high. But we also see a lot of people running to the door and pulling out their money when markets crash or stock prices go down significantly. The lesson here is, we should not try to time the market. If we realize that every generation, stocks go up and down, instead of reacting to that, we can continue investing steadily in a responsible portfolio. Young people, in fact, 
should smile when the market is low and keep investing. They're getting bargain prices for stocks. And when they eventually rise, that smile can turn into a full-blown smirk. Rule number five, build mountains of money with a responsible portfolio. Just like eating a healthy, balanced diet is important for our bodies, having a balanced portfolio is important for your finances and for you to get wealthy. The author recommends a mix of stocks and bonds in your portfolio. What are bonds? Bonds are like IOUs or loans that you make out to an organization. When you buy a bond, the company or government that you buy it from promises to pay it back in full and you also earn some interest on it. They're considered less riskier than index funds and can make your portfolio more stable. The rule of thumb is you should have a bond allocation that's equal to your age. Some experts even say it should be your age minus 10. Some even suggest a riskier, your age minus 20. For example, if you're 40 years old, your bond allocation should be anywhere from 20 to 40%. No matter your age, some amounts of bonds in your portfolio can provide balance and stability. A balanced portfolio is like a balanced breakfast. It's not the most exciting thing in the day, but you know it'll keep you going strong. Rule number six and seven, how and what to invest in. All right, I'm going to talk about these two rules together. Why? Because I feel like it, and that's how I roll. If you're looking to start investing in index funds, but are unsure where to begin, the author recommends Vanguard funds. They are the world's biggest provider of index funds and a good starting point. What's cool about Vanguard, other than its awesomely sounding name, is that it's basically set up like a nonprofit. The investors in its funds are the owners of the company. This allows them to lower fees for their clients. No matter where you are in the world, you can find some examples of index funds to invest in. Their popularity has skyrocketed over time. They're easy to invest in and they don't take up a lot of your time to manage and invest. Especially in the age of the internet, it has become easier than ever to invest in these funds. You can use online robo-advisors to make portfolios for you with index funds. Companies such as Betterment and Wealthfront in the US or Wealthsimple or Questrade in Canada make it easier than ever to get started on your investing journey. Rule number eight, ignore the haters. When you start your index fund investment journey, you will probably face a lot of resistance from your financial advisors or your bank. The truth is simple. They make more money selling you expensive mutual funds. The high fees and commissions that come with these funds are not what's best for you. They're what's best for your financial advisor. The biggest common argument the author has heard against index funds is that mutual funds will produce better returns than index funds over time. But as any good investor knows, past performance is not a guarantee of future results. Even if there are some examples where mutual funds may perform better than index funds, these gains are eaten up by the high fees of these mutual funds. And the few mutual funds that do manage to beat the market in the long term are almost impossible to identify ahead of time. So ignore the haters and stick with investing in index funds. Rule number nine, avoid seduction. Investment newsletters and magazines, garbage. They run on subscriptions. They may have ads to sell you other financial products. These are not a good idea for investment advice in the long term. Another common advice that comes up is gold. Invest in gold. But gold is overrated. If you invested $1 in gold in 1801, it will be worth about $54 by 2016. The same $1 invested in the US stock market in 1801 would be worth about $54 million in 2016. The math here is hard to argue against. So avoid seduction when investing and make the responsible investment decision with low fees. That's it, folks. These are the nine rules of wealth that you should have learned in school from Andrew Hallam's book, The Millionaire Teacher. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed to the channel for many such videos that are on the way. Once again, thanks for watching. Until next time.